Welcome to the Takeoff Experience where I sit down with highly driven people to talk about their journey, their failures and their successes. If you want to take off in your career, your business, your finances or your mindset, then this podcast is for you. Welcome back to the Takeoff. Joining us in the booth this week is Patrick, who is a co-founder of a company called Very Puzzled, who is a children's toy manufacturer that focuses on African Caribbean themed jigsaw puzzles for children. Their mission is to provide children and young adults with a platform that allows them to explore and learn about the richness of the African continent. I hope you are ready for the gems that are going to be dropped today. How are you doing today, Patrick? I'm very well, thank you, Atto, and uh, thank you for having me. No, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. It's, it's good to have you on board. I've been wanting to get you on um, for, for a while now, so I think today is going to be a very, very um, insightful conversation i always start the podcast with this question because i always find it interesting it's always interesting to to understand this um what is your worst uh, financial mistake um <laughs> probably made a few um i over leveraged myself i got a bit too ambitious um okay just at the start of the pandemic um mm. we wanted to really scale and so we acquired the, the license to make jigsaw puzzles for four premiership oh. clubs um wow. and that just didn't work um yeah we took out like a loan to make the puzzles plus we were paying a license fee and um wow yeah i, I literally yeah lost half of what yeah it just yeah so <laughs> a, few, wow. like, a, a couple of tens of thousands of pounds basically it cost me wow. so it hurts to think about it but um mm. and it's probably something that would it's gonna need to be paid off like over the next two to three years maybe so i just need to kind of breathe and um just pay it down gradually and just kind of um yeah but that's to be candid that's like the biggest final well biggest for us monetarily but you know Mm. other people have got other horror stories and stuff so um okay wow in the grand scheme of things it's maybe not a huge amount of money but for us it was kind of like a big ouch wow wow and Premier League clubs. Why? Why did you want to to do Premier League? Was it that you had an interest in football? You thought it was just like a good opportunity to to go down that I, way. I just thought it was a good opportunity. I was okay. just like thinking about different things, and I thought people mm. love their clubs. Clubs are mm. well supported. People yeah. pay, pay like sixty, seventy, eighty, hundred pounds or more for the shirts and the kits okay. every year. They buy multiple kits. I just thought it would, it would be a no brainer. I guess okay. it was more maybe like clout chasing they might say okay. in terms of you know these are well respected brands it's global you know people will go for it but i think what i'm learning and what maybe i'm not good at um is marketing i think okay. i can kind of develop the product um but actually yeah you have the products but people got to know about it and you've got to promote it and you've got to get it in front yeah. of people and i think that's one of the things that i've struggled with within the company mm-hmm um and looking to do more of that really um okay but also it's, it's a number of factors it was just yeah it wasn't i think people gravitated towards us because of our messaging and okay. the, you know what we were about like representing africa and the caribbean which is you know mm-hmm. underrepresented and so people mm-hmm. felt a passion and you know there was a mm-hmm. clear need there isn't really a need for an arsenal puzzle no one's like yeah. you know it's it's you know, it's great. It's not a bad yeah. thing, but actually, yeah, I like my club, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I don't know. So I think it was kind of that where actually, oh crap, I've never seen a puzzle of Africa before. Why not? Mm-hmm. I've never seen a puzzle of Jamaica or Ghana. Yeah. I have to get it. Like, you know, okay. it's, it's, it's just, yeah, it's there. But I think for clubs, it's like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I can, I can yeah, take that. Yeah, that makes sense. That, yeah, no, you know I what? I, I get it. Yeah, I, I definitely get what you're saying. I feel like, what you're saying is that like you know with with getting a football puzzle you feel like you don't stand out much right it's like who is actually the brand whereas with the the, the puzzles which we'll touch on a little bit later you have some you have a usp actually yeah. um, with it and you know sometimes i think with businesses there's risks sometimes you have to take the risk you know just to see yeah. what will work and what won't work so you know though you say okay yeah you know you spent this amount of money you were able to find another opportunity out of it you know sometimes even though it was an expensive opportunity you, you yeah. got something out of it um it's the way i like to, to to see it um okay very very interesting very very interesting i wanted to 
take it back because I wanted to get to know who you are. I know I, I described, you know, you as the co-founder, but who exactly is uh, Patrick? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm 45 years old now. I was born in Accra in Ghana. Um, okay, wow. I moved to the UK uh, when I was seven. Mm-hmm. So that, that's me in a nutshell, really. Um, my family uh, originate from a small town um, in the second city in, in uh, Ghana. Okay. That's my core essence, really. I'm just a kid from a town and, you know, like somebody that, you know, my grandmother loved dearly, that I loved dearly yeah. as well. And, you know, my mm-hmm. great aunts and stuff. And those are the people that I, I hold most dear. Um, them, my mom and, and my daughter, really, principally. Um, and I think at the core, just wanted to make them proud. Wanted to make my family mm-hmm. proud. Um, yeah, that's that. That's the wow. core. That's, there's, that's there's a lot of things above and beyond, but mm-hmm. when you strip everything else away, uh, my essence really is. Yeah, that's the the town that I hail from, and just want to make sure my my family are proud of me. Wow, wow. And do you do you go back to Ghana very often? I, so I try to. I haven't been back uh, since 2019 was the last time I went oh, wow. back. So I took my daughter with me. And it was mm-hmm. kind of like a business trip. We wanted to try and get stopped in some of the big retail outlets there. Um, okay. We've got a few that stopped us and it's doing okay. Uh, my dad okay. lives in Ghana, so he helps us uh, okay. there as wow. well. So that's been good. Uh, but before that, uh, I think I'd gone back a year or two before that um, when my grandmother passed away. So I went to her funeral. So I would definitely like to go back more often, um, but yeah, just yeah, I haven't the resources to do so. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that that makes sense. And um, so, is most of your family in Ghana, and you're the only one here, or is you got some family here? And it's a bit of both. Mostly, uh, my mum is in the UK, uh, and mm. my siblings are in the UK as well. So, um, and then I've got cousins, extended family in in the UK. So, um, it's a bit. of bit of both basically yeah okay wow wow that's that's very very interesting like yeah i've always always wanted to go to ghana it's on my list i've got yeah i've got quite a few like ghanaian friends like close close ones as well and they always told me like how um lovely um it is there so yeah it's definitely um on on my list um so i wanted to understand can you give us a bit of an insight into the day and life of patrick um yeah it's mostly work 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 <laughs> work uh, so yeah i don't know kind of get up at i don't know 5 30 or whatever and then 5 30 wow. yeah well the alarm goes up at five and then i i struggle to wow. get on i'm usually up by 5 30 but then um i try and like be at my desk as it were from like mm-hmm. six half six maybe or well, usually approaching seven and then i try and do like an hour of my own work and then mm-hmm. I prep like I work full time so then you know from eight I try and prep and we usually have like a daily stand up call at eight thirty. Um mm-hmm. so do that and then finish at five and then um wolf something down to eat and then um maybe try and do another couple of hours depending on what I what I have on. Typically it's answering lots of emails, chasing people, trying to get sales, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um mm-hmm. some days, you know, I might do more uh then weekends Mm -hmm. i will typically have my daughter like i pick her up on friday Mm -hmm. evening um and then drop her back to her mum's on sunday afternoon ish morning afternoon so Mm -hmm. yeah so when like in the mornings on the weekends i'll try and do some work in the evenings on the weekend i'll try and do some work um it's doesn't sound like the most glamorous most fun (laughs) existence um yeah i wouldn't necessarily recommend it to anybody um yeah but yeah, it's just yeah, answering emails, firing firing off emails. Okay. Trying to strategize wow. about the business, where we want to go, mm-hmm. what things to do. Um, yeah, I have a designer, so if I have an idea of a mm-hmm. new concept, then you know I'll run it by them, get them to start okay. you know designing it, do the research. Um, but yeah, it can be any number of emails, chasing suppliers, chasing mm-hmm. like stockists handling delivery postage okay. you, know, you name it pretty much um having to do it all wow so you're working in the business full-time 
right? It's, it's not like you're doing it on the side and then you've got a full time job. It's no, I'm working the full-time. business uh, part time. I have a full time job outside. Okay. Of yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's why you get into. That's why you wake up so early. Wow. Yeah. That is insane. Why? Why so early? Oh, I don't know. Curiosity. I've always kind of woke up early for a long mm. time. Um, mm. I kind of listened to like a tape a long time ago when before podcasts yeah. and things. And um, what struck me was, you know, the gratitude of being alive. Like yeah. actually, you got to think about the thousands, tens of thousands that people that went to sleep just never woke mm-hmm. up. Like, that's true. You know, because you just go to bed, you don't think about it, and mm-hmm. you know. Poof. So I'm always um, grateful to to you know to wake up and think, okay, cool. You know, I've got a chance to do something, and you know, I can push things along. So as hard as it might be, um, yeah, just having that gratitude, I guess. Wow, that's powerful. I've actually never heard anybody give me a reason like that as why as to why they wake up so early. So that is. When you say it, that literally just switched my mindset to be like, actually, you're, you're right. We always assume that we're just going to wake up the next day and it's just business as usual, pretty much. Wow. That is that is absolutely um, epic. And then typically when you're waking up at the six, that's when you're doing your full time job until the evening and then you start. doing. No, so okay. I try and like do like an hour before I start my normal okay. job. Um, OK. Again, just seeing what come came in overnight, like. Mm-hmm praying that Oprah emails me and like Jay-Z mm-hmm. puts in an offer. And <laughs> you happened. never know. <laughs> yeah. Just takes one of them, yeah. right? <laughs> so, um, but no, just catching up on things. Just, it's just a lot of it's really just answering emails and it's just pushing okay. things along a little bit, a little bit. Okay. Um, and then hopefully that momentum will build up over time. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. And then after my, my nine to five, as it were, then I, you know, I'll do some of my own work again you know, answering emails, just, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes it's just pen and paper, just, um, thinking of ideas, celebrities to approach, influencers to work mm-hmm. with, you know, answering emails and, you know, Instagram messages from people like yourself and thinking about, mm-hmm. you know, going on podcasts and things like that. So yeah, it, it varies. Um, yeah. So. Okay. That makes sense. And how, how do you find the balance of doing it? Cause I do a similar thing to you. I, I still got a full-time job and I'm also doing, you know, Savvy Wallet as a side hustle. How do you find that balance? Do you find it tough? Do you like it? Um, it's bad. It's not good. Um, mm. I kind of one of the things I think about is having like a co-founder so that the workload okay. is, is spread a bit better. That's one of the things I would advise uh, somebody else. Um, I think maybe my character and personality maybe doesn't lend itself so easily to a, a co-founder. I mm-hmm. kind of know what I want and I just do it and. Mm-hmm. I would just expect somebody else to be like that as opposed to like okay. endless meetings and debates to work out what to do. It's just like, just do it. Mm-hmm. If it works great, if it doesn't move on sort of thing. Okay. Um, but um, no, it's not good. Um, I mean, there's times when, you know, you neglect your health, like, you know, you might not exercise so frequently, mm-hmm. you know, just let your beard and hair, you just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're not really thinking about us. I think my daughter looks at me sometimes like, what's all this? Like, you, you know, like, so um so it's not good but i guess the idea is um a bit of focus and discipline for a short period of time will then Mm -hmm. set you up or will then pay dividends in the long run so um i guess it's just something that you know you hope is temporary you hope it's kind of um yeah so but it's not sustainable long term i don't think um and so yeah you need to have that balance. I mean, I do, I do binge on, you know, whatever TV shows and stuff from time to time, mm-hmm. but I feel that I'm always kind of, I don't know. I, 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 I find my business exciting. I find what I'm doing exciting yeah. in the journey, mm-hmm. um, motivating and, and inspiring and challenging for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm always keen just to keep doing more. So I don't feel yeah. like I'm missing out or I should be doing something else or I'm not having fun. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, at the stage where I am in my life, I feel, okay, cool. You know, I'm potentially building something here, you know, yeah, that could do something really, really, uh, you know, meaningful and impactful for me and, you know, for my daughter and maybe those around me as well. So yeah, you know, why, why not, you know, put the effort and the time that it takes to do it. So, yeah. 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 That, yeah, I completely agree with you. And it's, it's I think doing the, the balance is, is definitely really, really tough because you are, 
yeah, like you said, you, you have to, this, you can neglect your health at times. Um, I've also done the, you know, I, I was, I was, I told my fiance the other day, I said, like, I haven't watched Netflix for ages. It's been a while. And it's literally like what you were saying. Like I decide, okay, would I rather be, you know, trying to release an episode? Would I be rather trying to like create content or think up ideas or reach out to like potential, you know, guests, then, you know, watch, binge watch Netflix. And the answer is always normally yes. So I was like, that's why I don't, I don't, you know, no watch it. So I definitely um, understand it. And I think that's the dark side of, you know, entrepreneurship is tough, you know, especially if, you know, you don't have like some massive amounts of resources, you know, a lot of um, entrepreneurs and, you know, businesses are, you know, self-made, yeah. you know, they're bootstrapped. They're not trying to get equity or, you know, trying to get debt or, or have like a, a massive amount of savings to just be like, you know what, I'm just going to not work for, for, for a year. I'm just going to start my own business. A lot of people don't, don't have that. So then you having to work to try and then, you know, help support yourself while you're also working on the business. So yeah, definitely, definitely understand uh, where you're coming from on that. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I wanted to like go a little bit back in terms of your, your journey. Did you, did you go to university at all? Did you just go, start working? Yeah. Yeah. So it's an interesting one because I moved here from Ghana when I, as I said, when I was seven, um, mm-hmm. and it was a strange culture, sh- culture shock. Um, Mm. And I was actually, um, I was put like in the remedial class for like reading and writing because um, wow. I couldn't really read and write. Um, I kind of wow. just messed around. I was, I was sent to good schools in Ghana and stuff, but I just, I just messed around, um, even though mm-hmm. you'd get caned and stuff. My maths was really good. It was advanced, I think, for the time. And kids here were like using calculators. And my mum was just like, what the hell? Like, why, why, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I was, and even, even till now, my spelling is really bad. Um mm. And then I like, I did really badly at GCSEs. I got like three GCSEs mm-hmm. at the time. Wow. Um, I kind of failed my reset. <laughs> it's just like, wow. it, was, it was nuts. So I just wasn't serious at school for whatever reason. I don't know mm-hmm. why. And um, even though like my, my in my household, you know, it was drummed into us, like, you know, study hard. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I guess in the school that I went to, it just wasn't cool to like be smart or to like apply yourself and be disciplined. Okay. And so... I just kind of fell fell into that, you know, I don't know, be like a pseudo rude boy sort of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, rude I, was, boy. I wasn't, I wasn't a real rude boy, but I was kind of like yeah. you know, proto rude boy or something. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't until maybe I kind of left my area a little bit, and then mm-hmm. um, I managed to scrape into university, mm-hmm. and then I met like some really good friends there, and then I actually graduated. I did an IT degree, and I graduated um, with a two one, and then I worked for a couple of years then i did a, a master did an mba so it turned out okay in the end i think okay, um, wow. but um yeah it might be i don't know i think maybe i worried my worried my mum endlessly and um yeah just frustrated a lot of people i just didn't knuckle down and apply myself at all i feel um yeah which was bad and, and in hindsight um mm-hmm. yeah i i kind of wish i did um but i don't know i, I feel that maybe yeah i had fun then that i can now don't have to have fun now like in my later yeah. years yeah got it got it out my sister definitely system, so <laughs> definitely um who knows i don't know but yeah that's that's my thinking yeah why why do you feel bad about it even though you've achieved so much you've got an mba not a lot of people have that yeah i don't know for a lot of it it's just a tick box exercise mm. in terms of okay. you know parents happy i don't know like I, I mean all my siblings i'm the eldest they, we all graduated and stuff i mean i'm mm. the only one that's done a master's but they're all doing far better than me as it were so it's okay. kind of like you know qualifications are like yeah, i don't know i i, yeah. I don't know I've, I've got to the point where i'm just like experience and actually just back yourself like did you actually really need a degree mm-hmm. i don't know like if you back yourself and you know the money you spent you know acquiring these degrees and stuff actually could have just started a business i mean there's something to be said about going into work and learning on the job mm-hmm. sort of thing but also yeah if, if you can apply yourself and yeah do what you need to do really so yeah 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 i feel like you have to be definitely really disciplined to make sure that the money you're right it, i think some people there is an alternative world where some people could do really really well they don't go to university i know a lot of people that haven't gone to university and they've you know they've excelled 
and maybe either via an apprenticeship route or if they've started their yeah. own business and then vice versa right or, you know I know people that have gone through the more traditional route and they're still you know they're still doing well and then maybe they want to switch um later so yeah no I think it's about finding what works works well for you and just making sure that you identify that as 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 soon as possible I feel like there's no a lot of people do question like uni is it like worth it like spend a lot of money and I just feel like what you get, you get a lot from it. And sometimes you take that for granted at times you can take that for granted. Maybe the people you met, maybe a new way of thinking, Yeah. you know, even though is it very expensive, you're right. It's super, especially now, like, I mean, what is it now? Nine grand for yeah. a degree, which is insane. I mean, my degree was three grand. So for, for them one year paid three years for me, um, which is, yeah, which is mental. So yeah. now it's now a proper thought Like you have to now think, okay, 27, grand or yeah. i don't know uh, may, maybe a bit more is it worth it and then uh, what another 10 grand on top of you want to do a master's 37 grand is it really worth doing it yeah yeah it's um definitely definitely more difficult um i wanted to understand at what point did the idea for very puzzle come from um i had a number of ideas in the past like i did websites okay. um okay. and i wanted to really just build websites for other people and things like that again mm-hmm. It wasn't half-hearted, but I didn't really pursue things with a passion or I didn't really, yeah, I don't know, Very the, the real genesis for Very Puzzled was with the birth of my daughter. I just, okay. and that was 2011, I felt like I needed to do something. I felt like, you know, that gave me a purpose. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, three years later, um, like, the, my marriage uh, basically, like, dissolved. So we got divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, you know, I moved. And I think it was kind of approaching my 40th and i was like okay you know what am i gonna do i don't know maybe it was like a midlife crisis type of thing yeah maybe. okay i don't know i had ideas mm-hmm. and i was just running stuff by different people i thought about maybe doing like a subscription box service um mm-hmm. that would kind of curate different uh products from black owned businesses and make it easier mm-hmm. to like shop black basically you pay like 30 mm-hmm. pounds 40 pounds a month and you get like four or five items in a box and it's mm-hmm. just easy um, and this was obviously before like Black Lives Matter and like you know mm-hmm. everything that kind of really kicked off. Um, I thought about doing like top trumps, but half of the people under- knew what top trumps were, other half didn't know. I'm like, I thought everybody knew top. Trump. I thought it was like universal. Apparently not. Um, so yeah, I was just like ideating, thinking about different things, and then I thought mm-hmm. about the jigsaw puzzle. And I spoke to a cousin about it at, at a wedding. I mean, when I spoke to him, I was talking about the top trumps. And his eyes just kind of glazed over. He just didn't get it. And this was like a really smart guy. I was like, okay, I, yeah. within like 10 seconds, I, I saw that I'd lost him. I mentioned the jigsaw mm-hmm. puzzle like, of African. He's like, oh, yeah, that's it. Like, you, you saw him. I'm like, okay, that, okay. that resonates. And then um, so I kind of went about getting some designs, some mock-ups, um, getting a prototype done and things like that, getting the costings. And I still wasn't sure whether to do it or not. Okay. So I just messaged like... Uh, my my brothers and my cousins who, who in the, like in a WhatsApp group and all like yeah it's a great idea no I love it um yeah you know happy to chip in and I was like okay cool mm-hmm. um so I just went ahead and, and did it um just based off mm-hmm. their feedback um mm-hmm. yeah and, and it and it just went really well people were really excited about it and so yeah um it just kind of kept going since then basically okay wow. And the idea itself, did was it an inspiration from something or did you always want to do puzzles? No, um, it's just something that struck me. Um, mm. I think one thing I liked when I was looking around, I saw that there was books and I saw that people mm-hmm. doing like t-shirts and other products. Mm-hmm. And I saw like Fuse ODG had his like Hello Nana dolls. And I was like, oh, okay. cool. I'm like, this is a guy that's like a celebrity. He's a musician. You know, he appears to be doing well and he's kind of invest in his resources time and energy yeah i'm like okay so this is you know so there must be a market or there must be you know and and being a father myself and you know and i struggled for books you know to the point where at one point i was like emailing my dad like okay can you get me these books from ghana and stuff like that so i mean i I enjoyed it at a time like on the weekends i'll be up at night like you know searching through amazon for books of you know black main characters and that sort of thing but i also felt that this is hard and mm-hmm. not everybody's going to want to do this and we shouldn't have to like, you know, it should be, you know, readily and more, more readily available. And so I just yeah. thought, okay, I, I feel like there's a gap in the market. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I just thought jigsaw puzzles were great because, you know, there's so many benefits like cognitive benefits, you know, Mm -hmm. hand eye coordination, emotional, you know, benefits and, and things. And yeah, I just, I just thought it would be really a great way to showcase Africa and, you know, show it in a positive light as opposed to always doom and gloom and war and famine and that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. I love that. And like I said, that, that's why I wanted to get you on the podcast. Cause I just thought it was a very, very interesting um, concept from your point of view, because I, I gave a description of what, very puzzled, but from your point of view, what would you describe it as? It's a really good question. So I think people always look at it as jigsaw puzzles, a box, a mm-hmm. product, you know, a service, what have you. I think initially it, it, it was that and it was just to get the business going. But now it's mm-hmm. the way I look at it is it's quality time. It's it's almost something okay. like, it's almost like, I don't know if the word's ephemeral. It's 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 a okay. feeling. It's kind of, okay. and with like the past couple of years of COVID and being distant from our loved ones, it's kind of like, you, you kind of actually, what do we really care about? It's being close mm-hmm. to people we care about and like actually, mm-hmm sitting down and you know if whether it's having conversation whether it's having you know food together whether it's playing you know it's just whether it's mom grand niece nephew mm-hmm. you know it's that family time that quality time and and that's yeah. to me that's what i remember from my childhood and the kind of memories i want to give to my daughter so it's it's about yeah sitting down and just having a laugh having a chuckle you know whether it was back in the days watching the a team or the price is right you know yeah. just <laughs> those feelings and like that, that you, you feel safe and secure and you feel like you know just yeah so it's just that really it's quality time and that just that's what, what we really want to give to people and the fact that they can learn the fact that you know it's educational the fact that you know they get all these other benefits is great but actually it's the fact that you sat down with either one of your parents or other family member or friend or whoever and actually just engaged with them and you just had that you know great time and great conversation whatever it might be and so you know so hopefully with that um you know we've got the puzzles and looking at like a bingo game and and other types of Mm -hmm. games and we've got like t-shirts that children can color in Mm -hmm. so it's 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 about taking that that whole africa concept and other things but also just you know applying it to different places so it's just it's stuff like you know a parent like a dad might teach their, their child like how to fry plantain or how to make okay. rice it's just it's just little things where yeah. like you feel that sense oh i connected you know i had a quality time with my dad or you know we washed mm-hmm. a car together it's like it cost nobody any money sort of thing but actually yeah somebody's taking their time to spend some time with me and you know teach me something or just you know just hang out with me and you can't i don't I, you can't buy that to me that's what we kind of yeah. want to give to people just that yeah and I, that that's my passion because i feel that in this day and age it's easy just to switch on a tv be on your tablet be on your phone and actually Mm -hmm. you know i've been out with friends and like like stag dudes or whatever and it's like we're just all on our phones it's like what the hell (laughs) imagine yeah and so and i'm not against technology but Mm -hmm. i don't know maybe it's my age and the era that i grew up in when things were analog and you know i look back i'm like wow that was rubbish but actually you got to sit with people and you got to actually converse have a conversation actually you know just enjoy people's company and that's that's the overarching kind of ethos for the business really quality time and just wanting to help families connect and have quality time together wow wow i love that quality time is definitely important um i think you're right i think we definitely neglect it it's i do find it funny like when you, you're going out and everybody's on their phone not to say that you shouldn't check your phone check no. it if you want but literally that's what you're doing the whole time it's like What's the point of you being out? You can just do that at home, right? Well, it's, it's all about um, the stories now, right? And like Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> and, and that's fine. Again, you've got to share it. And yeah. you know, I get it. Yeah. But also it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. It's Enjoy weird. where you're at, right? Enjoy the experience and, you know, do, do what you're doing. Um, mm, yeah. Wow. I love, I love that explanation of, you know, spending quality time. Are you able to take me through the different sort of, you know, products um, that you're currently offering at the moment? Yeah, so we have our puzzles, hence very puzzled, and that was like our first mm-hmm. product, and we've got about twenty mm-hmm. different SKUs now. So we started. Okay, off with wow, Africa. twenty. Yeah, so we started off with Africa, then we added mm-hmm. uh, Ghana, then Nigeria, mm-hmm. then Jamaica. We've got a Caribbean. Um, 
where we want to do like the UK and like you know the US and things like that, but not necessarily just focusing on like the African Caribbean or African American contribution, but mm-hmm. kind of making it more broad. Uh, but again, okay. we're not sure because some people say don't do that. Other people say great, do it. Um, okay. So can I can I interject there and ask you a question? Because I was going to ask you before, how do you take feedback from people? I know, sorry, I know you're explain, explaining it, but think about that answer if you want to continue. But like, do you just, is it just like if somebody says, look, don't do this, you're not going to do it? Or is it like, no, this is my idea, I'm, I'm going to pursue it? I, I, I definitely listen. Whether oh. I heed that advice and actually execute on it, yeah. it's a different thing. I definitely, definitely okay. do listen and I get it. Okay. Um, but also it's, yeah, and I understand why people say that. Um, it's kind of 50-50. Some people will be like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, just stick to, like, your sweet spot and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But then I feel that, and maybe I'm wrong, I feel like maybe that's a bit too niche. And it isn't niche, mm-hmm. but it also kind of is. And I just feel, mm-hmm. actually, I just want to be, you know, as big and as broad as possible and kind of, but then it's yeah. like, yeah, you do that, but then you're kind of diluting and actually will you find you know, the white middle class parents mm. buy into your brand as opposed to, mm-hmm. you know, the black middle class parents who love your brand and who get it and who want mm-hmm. it and who, who who there is a need. I mean, if you live in the UK, do you need an England puzzle? Like everything in the mm-hmm. UK is England anyway, essentially. Yeah. So like, yeah. There's no true. like there's no sense of like, you know, not being represented. So they don't have mm-hmm. the same kind of urge and the same kind of, you know, but then it's like, well, but if the, if it was there, would they not buy it? Probably yes. So so it's, it's yeah. and and it's a good debate. And it's again, it's well, let's try it and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, okay. then you know we can pull back. But yeah, if I, I feel like sometimes I have to try things and see, as opposed to just mm-hmm. you know, yeah, there's too much of an itch and an urge. And if I don't, then you just never know. So yeah. Yeah, that, okay, that makes sense. Sorry, I kind of interrupted you as you were mid-speaker. So you said that you had uh, 20, 20 SKUs and yeah. products, so 20 different products, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the 20 different uh, puzzles at the moment. Again, people say, mm-hmm. you know, keep it simple, scale back, just focus mm-hmm. on the key ones that work. Um, but I've kind of got it into my head as just IP and having as many. And even mm-hmm. sometimes we have designs, but we haven't actually manufactured and produced them. But again, it's just mm-hmm. building up the IP because at some point, hopefully we have a backer or somebody says we can actually get these out better than you. So we will license them from you or something and you can sit back and yeah, we'll give you a licensing fee and we'll do the work. And then, yeah, I can get more of my life back and actually spend more <laughs> time with my own daughter that I preach. Yeah. So, um, so that's that. But then, yeah, we've got other products that we've leveraged our designs mm-hmm. onto. So uh, we've got coloring t-shirts, which I don't know if I've got an example here. Okay. So it's oh, just wow. a t-shirt that then you can color in. Okay. Oh, wow. Or, Interesting. And then, we, yeah, so then we're using that. And even my daughter had an idea to do, like, mugs with the same design. Okay. Again, you can, so, again, it's it's trying to keep kids away. Well, not kids, but children and their families away from screens as much as possible mm-hmm. so they can have other activities that they can do. So we would want to do things like a guidebook. So if you're going to Jamaica, mm-hmm. you might have like a very puzzled guidebook with the puzzle. Wow. And so you can take it on a plane. So instead of them kind of, you know, just watching the movies that can, you know, find out about the currency, you know, the heroes and, and personalities and do like a word search, crossword, whatever it is. So again, my thing with my daughter, especially when she was a lot younger, is like the more I can keep you away from screens, the better I feel that I am as a parent. That was kind of my, my thing. Like, um, okay. and that's good and bad. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to leverage that on, onto as many products as possible, but not in a okay. tacky way. Um, and mm-hmm. then we're trying to work with some corporate partners. Um, we did a puzzle mm-hmm. for Airbnb. We oh. worked with the black cultural archives to do a puzzle for okay. them. And we potentially have, uh, another, um, corporate partner potentially. So again, yeah. So yeah trying to be i don't know just looking at it as as like merchandise now and Mm -hmm. what things can we do that you know add value basically i guess is is the key thing because there's lots of things we can do but actually where does it add value where does it actually enhance people's lives in some way and you know Mm -hmm. actually benefit them and so 
that's kind of um yeah the, the idea so yeah wow that's very very interesting i had so many follow-up questions one the interesting one that caught my eye was um that you mentioned um airbnb so what what exactly did you do for them in that situation yeah so they they um a company approached us and they were like oh you know do you do like white labels or bespoke puzzles and i was like like, we've got a company that might be interested and i was like at first i was almost like here's the manufacturer just go ahead and make it yourself you don't need me mm-hmm. <laughs> then part of me is like no, what, what, no um and i was like yeah you know I thought these are the prices, these are our times, and then they're like, okay, thanks. And then like three or four weeks later, they came back, oh yeah, Airbnb are interested, you know, they want like 3,000 units, and I was like, whoa, okay, wow. let's, let's, let's talk. Um, and yeah, so I just did it for them, and um, they've they've ordered it twice now, so the idea would be that they would order wow. every year, um, and then we've got another deal, well, it's not a deal, but we've got another potential partner like that as well. We did like a mock-up okay. for... Um, the designs for San Fran- like a San Francisco puzzle. Um, mm-hmm. So we're hoping that that would work. And then it's a case of looking at other companies that we could then do ones, I don't know, LA, Atlanta, you know, New York, Detroit, Chicago. So that's mm-hmm. an exciting opportunity potentially. Um, yeah. Trying to get that, some of that corporate leverage or whatever it might be. And yeah, kind of use that to really, have a foundation that then we can then build on and create, you know, more African centric and more Caribbean centric puzzles as well. So yeah, so wow. that's the idea. It wasn't something I had thought about or had had any knowledge mm-hmm. or awareness of when I first started, but then you learn um, and you, you get one success and it's like, okay, when somebody else approaches, oh yeah, we did a puzzle for Airbnb and Black God, yeah, we, you know, mm-hmm. we do this, you know, where yeah, <laughs> we've got experience and yeah, and mm-hmm. then you've got that kind of credibility. So yeah. And I think a lot yeah. more corporate companies now understand that they need to diversify their supply chain and, and mm-hmm. you know, whatever else. So yeah, um, that helps, I guess. Wow. And that Air, Airbnb work that you did for that, is that for them to sell their own puzzles? What, what they no, using the puzzles so for? they basically just, they gift it to like um, the super host or the, the people that let their properties to them. So uh, yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, I, I was aware of. Interesting. Yeah. It's something I've, I've been aware of, like companies, just like big companies anyway, which is especially the yeah. tech company. They'll just buy stuff for just like giveaways and things like that. It's yeah. Just, just because they've got budgets and they've got to spend money mm-hmm. and, you know, butter people up as it were. So um, <laughs> yeah. That is so interesting. So effectively, you could do something like this, but for hotels, right? And spaces. Effective, you think about all the spaces in the world, right? All of these corporate. When I say corporate, it's not even just really corporate because a hotel isn't corporate. You've got your mm. normal customers. Some some rooms, some really high-class rooms can say, okay, look, we want to have like uh, a, f- a few games. We want to have puzzles for them to, yeah. to be able to play. So you've got that opportunity there available to you as well. There's lots of opportunities. I think the difficult thing about that is you don't know who they are, how to get into yeah. them. So that's the difficult, and you can spend all your time trying to reach out to these people. Um, mm-hmm. They don't have the, the budgets, and sometimes as well, it's it's done through other companies, like they outsource okay. this kind of procurement and and sourcing of their, you know, whatever they want to buy. So it's like mm-hmm. you can call the companies direct, but actually they're not. You know, and sometimes they might pass you on to the right person, but again, some of this stuff is is luck. Um, and yeah. I think the Airbnb thing the people that buy some of their goods, I, I guess it was right, you know, in that time in 2020, when it was like after the George Floyd uh, murder. Okay. And things, so they were very like, okay, yeah, we probably need to like be more diverse and be seen to do more. Okay. So I think that part of that came about um, through that. Um, I mean, the way I look at it is it was an unfortunate situation, but also it's like they could have gone to anybody and, and got the same, mm-hmm. maybe like, you know, quality and outcome and it just shows mm-hmm. you know there's maybe some tokenism in it but actually they mm. do need to think more and be more diverse and be more inclusive yeah and actually I, I delivered um yeah and you know yeah i'm we did just as a good job maybe better than somebody else would have done so it's like mm-hmm. you know yeah and i just feel that like a lot of the times we're not included or we're kind of excluded from these yeah. opportunities and so we, we mm-hmm. kind of don't benefit um yeah so there needs to be more like effort 
to, to be more inclusive. Yeah, I I I completely hear what you're what you're saying. It's um it's true. You delivered, and they came back, right? And now you have a, a, an agreement with them to to be doing this because of how good you did. And you're right. Like, I think when we you know we talk about the George Floyd, I know this is not a political podcast. You know, disclaimer. Um, but just briefly, you know, touching on your point on your point, Patrick. I think I think you're you're right. It's just given being given opportunity, right. right, to be able to deliver. Not to say that sometimes some people might not deliver. Yeah. That could happen. But there there could be a host of people that you're meeting out there that are quality like yourself who can actually um, um, deliver. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that you were able to uh, get that opportunity, and now you've learned, and now you've got like you said, you've got that credibility. Airbnb is a client. Pretty much, you could work with anybody else because Airbnb is one of the biggest in that industry. Right. Um, so, very, very interesting. And there was something else that you said that I wanted to, to touch on. So, you mentioned licensing. Is that something that you would that you you would be interested in doing? Yeah, it no, sounded like you would be. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, people have speculated <laughs> different ways. Like, I know, I know, I know. One friend is like, you're just waiting for the time when, like, you know, a Martel or Hasbro comes in. I'm like. No, I mean, I, I've spoken, I haven't spoken to people, but when I've like pitched for funding and things like that, and people like, yeah, I'm not really pitching because I don't really want to, I want to, I don't want to give up equity in my business because yeah. I look at it as like that's my inheritance for my daughter, and so mm-hmm. I want her to have you know as big a percentage of the pie as possible, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, she's got her own ideas, um, and so I think the licensing thing for me would be great in that somebody gives me like, I don't know, five, 10, 15, 20%, you know, of the profits and mm-hmm. they do all the work. Um, mm-hmm. Sounds great to me in a way, because then it's, it's just mm-hmm. mostly upside um, and I can kind yeah. of sit back and then maybe pursue other opportunities and other passions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. To me, that's sad. To me, that's good because otherwise, you know, you're taking all the risk, all the logistics and it, it will get to a point where, I can't like leverage getting into America or getting into Sweden and Germany mm. or getting into Japan or, you know, Mexico and stuff. I, I you know, mm-hmm. I'll have to grow the business. I'll have to get more people. Yeah. And then, you know, and I've seen other companies that I, like, I aspire to like puzzle companies. And it's like, mm-hmm. I can't remember one of them. I don't know if they made like two or 5 million, but actually profits were like, a quarter of a million i'm like you made all that money and that's the only profit you've made i'm wow. like wow that's i don't know if maybe they were just doing that because they have to pay less tax but i okay. was like wow okay you made five million but actually profit wise you've only i'm like that's a lot of work and a lot of people i don't know I just, yeah and it felt to me like actually if i could Not high margin somebody, it sounds somebody right, does all right. the work and they give me a quarter of a million yeah. Why wouldn't I take that as opposed to, you know, yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong, but yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good I, problem to have. Yeah, it is a good problem to be having. I mean, you might change your mind when, you know, when, when the opportunity comes, you might be like, yeah, you might not want to do that. But I, I completely get, understand that. It sounds like you want to build a business. You still want to own the rights to it, but then you also want to get back some of your time Ex- exactly. for, for building it to, to, to where yeah. you've, where you built it which and i think you know that makes sense i think now it's for me it's, it's about intellectual property more because mm. you know I, I don't manufacture the goods myself necessarily you yeah know, it's manufactured elsewhere um mm-hmm. and i don't do a really great job at marketing but i think mm-hmm. we've got you know the different product ranges that we've built out and i think it's mm-hmm. about more about that than yeah the actual you know hard labor of manufacturing it getting it distributed and stuff so if somebody else has expertise in that and they can you know have economies of scale then yeah yeah then, it's, then i still own the rights and then i can license mm-hmm. that out so and that's really what the likes of i don't know like disney or mm-hmm. jk rowling with with harry potter does so she you know licenses the rights for the film for like the mm-hmm. merchandise for the theme park you know for the play so you know she's written a book that's her ip but then actually all these other people and, and to a point i don't know if rightly or wrongly but i think most of her revenue now is generated not from the books and i think it was at one point mm. um like steven spielberg's most of his revenue wasn't in 
the films, it was like the theme parks because he had negotiated wow. like a percentage of like the ticket sales on all the rides. So it's mm-hmm. just so when you see like a lot of you know things that people saying like with Kobe Bryant, like with one like drinks endorsement deal, he mm-hmm. made more from that than all his career earnings from basketball. Yeah. So I feel that I've got to leverage this IP in some way um, and okay. use that. So yeah. That, that's 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 my belief anyway um it's a smart yeah. idea it's a smart idea <laughs> it's very it's very very smart um i wanted to understand can you take me through the process of actually you know setting up your first puzzle what yeah what what that process is what that looks like the first one was interesting um i had an idea and then a lot of things are just fortuitous maybe like mm-hmm. i was I was on a like Adobe. They've got like a um, like a stock uh, website for like stock images and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think I, I knew I wanted a puzzle, so I, I kind of googled on, on their site um, like Africa and like Africa designs mm-hmm. and stuff. And there was one that really well. I saw a few, but they were really kind of boring. And I was like, you can't make a puzzle. Of this. <laughs> there's no detail. There's no kind of contrast. There's nothing of interest. Yeah. Um, but then I saw one that eventually became the template for what we did. And it was like, okay, this is uh, it was just one of those things. You see something like, okay, this is perfect. This is like captivating. It's just bright. It's in, you know, it's interesting for children, you know, and I, I was able to reach out to the designer and I was like, okay. Cause I, at the time he just had like, I don't know, animals and like generic stuff on there. And I was like, if I gave you like, you know, uh, a list of things to, you know, update, would you do it? And he's like, yeah, cool. So, mm-hmm. so he did that. Um, and then based on that, we then pivot, not pivoted, but then we, you know, I remember I was like, go, I was going for walks, like during lunchtime mm-hmm. at work. And I was like, how am I going to mm-hmm. leverage this and improve, like expand? And I was like, okay, you could do like bigger pieces for younger children, smaller mm-hmm. pieces for older people. You could mm-hmm. then do like. I mean, there's other ideas that like you can do, like, different variations, like the different natural mm-hmm. resources in Africa or mm-hmm. put in, you know, different, like, female personalities. And I was like, yeah, you can't just iterate on Africa design forever. Like, people are going to get bored. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, mm-hmm. no, maybe do Ghana. Like, you know, I was like, okay. And then, mm-hmm. then I was like, okay. Then, okay, then you can do other countries. And so then that, that's when it kind of took on. Cause yeah. I, when I first did the first one, I hadn't, hadn't thought that far ahead, to be honest. And so mm. then it, I was like, okay, cool then other things have come along since then. So a, a lot of the times, not to go on, it's just, it's very whimsical. Okay. Hence the name very puzzled. Like I don't really take it very seriously. And, you know, mm. we thought, <laughs> I love it. Like, you do like a London puzzle, but the idea was mm-hmm. put a grime MC in every borough. So okay. you know, every, every borough has a grime. So it's like where they originate from and stuff. But then I thought, okay, that's maybe one stereotypical too not very inspiring like for your age mm-hmm. range of of, of your mm-hmm. users your customers mm-hmm. um and so yeah then so then i obviously made it more diverse so then i added like politicians yeah. actors you know directors architects you know i could it's a, people from different professions so it's a bit more broader okay. in in that sense but mm-hmm. it was just the idea of just have a puzzle of like a, a different grime machine every borough and so that was okay and I, interesting i just thought that would be fun thing to do and yeah like, okay cool let's let's just try it wow wow that's so interesting i mean this is what's great about business you get to be creative and just try different things and try and realize the ideas and it seems like you're the type of person that likes to take risks and it's okay to take risks you know some people have ideas and they don't even execute on it you know, sometimes with an idea, it, sometimes it's, it can be fuzzy, you know. Even for me, when I started Savvy Wallet, like, I didn't start it thinking, oh, I'm going to do a podcast. That just came a year and a bit in. I was like, oh, actually, it makes sense to navigate to a podcast. Let's execute and, and, and do that. So it's very, 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 very interesting. And then in terms of how you do it now, is it is a process a bit more structured? Do you... Do you have then a designer? Then you then get it made somewhere else, and then it's then shipped to people. How 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 does that process work? I wish it was more structured. It is in a way. I mean, at one point, I had mm-hmm. a cousin in Ghana, and I'd get mm-hmm. him to do the research, so then I could do other okay. things. Because typically, okay. I would just open up a Google sheet, and then I would just say, okay, mm-hmm. 
this country or this region, what are the different like districts or regions mm-hmm. in that place, and then list out their attractions, and then you know. So, so I, I do have a template now to say, okay, these are the kind of people we want to list. So we want to always have like mm-hmm. a gender balance. So there's always as many females as we, as males on a puzzle, and then we mm-hmm. always say, you know, who are like the top actors, the top authors, the top athletes, you know, mm-hmm. top poly- and then we'll just kind of put them so so we would re- really want to you know children to feel empowered to see people yeah look like them across different professions mm-hmm. and then we also want to make it so that it's people that are current so on the jamaica puzzle for instance you would have uh usain bolt um and then mm-hmm. shelly and fraser so you've got that you know mm-hmm. male female and then you'd have you know people that you know more historical so you'd have like marcus garvey and um mm-hmm. Bob Marley, of course, but then you have people like mm-hmm. Marlon James, who's like an author, and mm-hmm. then Michael Lee Chin, who's like a billionaire uh, you know, wow. in Jamaica. So it's trying to give people, you know, different role models, different people that they can kind of mm-hmm. aspire to. And and the idea is some you're going to know already and others mm-hmm. you're going to have to think about and do some research and also mm-hmm. go away and think about, you know, who might not be there that maybe should be there. Okay. There's always a debate. I always get that feedback. Oh, this person's on there's like, yep, sorry. Can't go <laughs> um, So it's going to be like that. The top, who's the top five? And you're like, Oh, what, what, how can you miss this person? Are you mad? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, and it's fun. I appreciate the feedback because it feels you know, like, yeah. you know, They've taken the time to actually buy my product, you know, use it, mm-hmm. and then give me, you know, their feedback and things. So, so I mm-hmm. do appreciate that. But sometimes, like, yeah, it's, it's a struggle. Like, you know, I can't get it right. And sometimes you, there's only space for so many people, and you don't have like mm-hmm. five athletes versus, you know, one mm-hmm. like academic because you kind of, not mm-hmm. every child wants, you know, and I feel like sometimes in our community and our culture, we're always, you know, we celebrate, you know, the footballers and the athletes. And I mm-hmm. also want other children that may be more academic to kind of feel that they're also represented. Um, yeah. I feel like having that might have made me a bit more focused in school. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Because I feel like, you know, it's all about X Factor sometimes or Britain's got in. It's just yeah. like, it's just focused on, you know, them being successful, which is great. You mm-hmm. know, if that's your talent, that's your gift. By all means, pursue it and, and be the best. But also... I feel that we need people that, you know, are going to be the academics, are going to solve, you know, Mm -hmm. climate crisis. They're going to do, you know, other things as well. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's my belief. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's old school and backwards or whatever. But, yeah. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's, yeah, I I completely get that. It's it's representation at the end of the day, right? It's Mm -hmm. just having a fair representation. And that makes sense. So, okay, so you come up with the, the idea, you do do research, you then um does that that get sent off to designer yeah. and then in terms of like oh yeah yeah no it's weird because i had the original designer was based in the us um and okay. he kind of interesting decided he didn't want to do it anymore and i somehow managed to find another designer and they're based in russia so it's just a crazy oh movie. wow i feel that maybe i should have taken more time to find uh, a designer like a, a, a black illustrator um, that's one of yeah. the things that I would like to do more of and kind of yeah. circulate, you know, that money within the community a bit more. But I, you mm-hmm. know, I think at the time I just, I was just hell bent on getting something done and doing it as, mm-hmm. as possible. So that was what I was able to find at that time. And, um, so no, I, I just give them a, a Google spreadsheet that I share with them and they're, they're really mm-hmm. brilliant when you think about it, like English is not their first language. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I send them links to the pictures that I would like and they, they do a really great job. But yeah, the very rarely do I, does it need to go through lots and lots of iterations? It's just, they just kind of get it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And typically, you know, I'm more like, that's your expertise. You kind of mm-hmm. tell me what design works and you mm-hmm. give me something that you think works. And then mm-hmm. I will then say yes or no, or, or make tweaks. And sometimes mm-hmm. I'm a bit, should I be asking for tweaks? Like, like they know, right? <laughs> like they know what what's aesthetically ple- mm-hmm. like uh, pleasing. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, I have an idea, or I, you know, I need it to be a certain way, and then I, you know, I, I would voice my input. But typically, I'm like, that's that's your domain, so you know, yeah, kind of dazzle me, basically. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely get that. So after the design stage, they, they have a designer. Do you then get a company to build your puzzle? Do they do the fulfillment or are you doing the shipping yeah, yourself? So and it, it gets made out in China. The original prototype we had okay. done in the UK, but it was really bad mm-hmm. and yeah, expensive. Oh, really? Now, oh, wow, um, okay. Yeah, so now it gets made out in China. They ship it to us. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still doing all of the, the, the fulfillment myself. Um, mm-hmm. Again, people have talked about it like, put it into some kind of center and then they'll do the, the, the fulfillment. I, I need to do that because like if I'm on holiday, I need to like give the puzzles to my sister or somebody to kind of do the fulfillment wow. sort of thing or just tell people okay. like you're not getting your puzzles for, for, for the time being. So that's not really professional mm-hmm. or um, yeah. So that's something I need to look at doing, but I'm always very, very cost conscious and I hate spending mm-hmm. money. So it feels like yeah. it eats at me, but yeah, it's, it's got to be done. I think. Yeah, it's it's definitely that that balance that you have to between growing. You know, if you if because I feel like Amazon, what even though Amazon's struggling their margin at that time, I think why people go to Amazon is because they're quick. Yeah, yeah. You order two three days, you're getting it right. Yeah. I think people love that reliability. They yeah. can get go to Amazon and get anything right. So I think sometimes. Yeah, it might be an extra expense, but I think sometimes that it could offset it. You know, mm-hmm. people think, okay, yeah, I'm going to get it quickly. You know, but it's at the end of the day, there's another risk that you got to have to take. You don't know if that's how it's going to be. Yeah. It, might, it may even take a while. It may take a, um, a few years, so you might have to just um, put in that, that risk. Um, with China, right, I'm not too, like, familiar with, like, you know, doing merchandise and, and things like that. But with China, is there fear that they will replicate like what you're doing and try and you know get you out of the market just yeah, do yeah. like crappy cheap versions of what you're doing definitely um and i've definitely i've definitely fallen prey to that because um okay yeah, another wow. company approached them to do like a similar puzzle and they're like oh yeah we already have this design and then they just like made my design for them and changed like the packaging um it was like a french company and i was like what the hell well from Ivory Coast, and I was like, "What the hell, guys? Like, what? Wow. Are you doing? Like, you know, this is my IP. Like, you, this is unacceptable. How are we supposed to build a relationship? Mm-hmm. Like, and mm-hmm. you can't really do much else other than just like complain and like, you know, blast them. But mm. they're like a million miles away. They're like, yeah, whatever. Shut up. Feel like, you know. Wow. Um, but no, I mean, I've I've seen two other companies do similar puzzle to mine, but and that that's fine. That's totally legitimate because it's like they've created their own design and that's like, that's fine. It's like, you know, I don't own the rights to, you know, puzzles of Africa or any African Caribbean countries. I, I accept that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just that this one, they basically took my exact design and just, yeah, just changed the packaging. And I think just put the country names in French and it was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is, that is, this is oh. BS. You can't do this guys. Um, so, so that hurt. Um, and part of me was like, yeah, yeah you know, I'm going to find a different, like manufacturer but it is what it is like once you send it to them once you know they've got the digital like images and stuff yeah it is but i think my thing is do a good job tell your story get it out there Mm -hmm. um grow your brand um and just keep going and you know there's always going to be like copycats potentially and and Mm -hmm. mock-offs and rip-offs and things and you kind of see it now where people like with drop shipping and stuff you know they can do that you know Mm-hmm. but yeah i don't know you can you can worry and let that stop you but at the same time it's like yeah it's, it's there's nothing you can do really you just got to make yours good tell your story and, and get it out there um yeah and just hope people see it and and kind of gravitate towards it wow yeah i definitely get the frustration so it seems like somebody saw your idea they liked it and instead of saying let me help you let me invest in it can i be a partner in it they just literally stole your idea and then saw it as a way to make some a quick buck but i think what you said was very important you know a lot of people can still and imitate and mimic stuff but they're not going to have the same vision as you have so yeah maybe they make some money in the short term but can they sustain 
the effort when it's in periods where it doesn't work well yeah. you know or are they just going to move on to something else and it's probably that they're just going to move on to something else especially if it's come from a place of imitation yeah it's not original it's not really a passion of yours you're just copying what somebody else is doing yeah. you know and you thought oh yeah that's a brilliant idea let me just copy it um kind of thing it must also be very frustrating for you as well to be like one of the first people doing it and other people are now doing it so then it kind of validates your idea in a in an interesting way that's exactly how i look at it i mean i didn't invent jigsaw puzzles so i can't take credit for that so yeah i don't like yeah. sit on a high horse to be like oh you can't be doing this you're copying me but no i've seen like other black brands doing more jigsaw puzzles now and doing I'm like, okay oh, cool like and they come at it from a different angle, which is fine. They come mm-hmm. at it from like maybe showcasing different professions or showcasing like black kids mm-hmm. in, you know, different kind of um, situations, which is really great. And mm-hmm. I'm all for it because I feel, you know, people need the choice. So that's, mm-hmm. that's good. The more of this that we, I, I always feel that like the more of this that we have, it just becomes the norm. It doesn't become, yeah. oh, you have, to go, you have to go out of your way to find this, to like do this actually. We're gonna get a jigsaw puzzle. It's just a matter of which of the ten mm-hmm. options that we get, and hopefully, you know, yeah, you get picked every so often, and they get picked, and we all do well. So mm-hmm. I, I, I feel it's it's a good thing. It helps everybody. Like you go to the supermarket, you know, there's fifty different types of cereal. There's twenty different types of bread. You know, there's yeah, <laughs> true. You know, you 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 need that and you go you just pick whichever one whichever brand you're loyal to basically or whichever one's got the mm-hmm. best offer at the time or whichever one whatever whatever reason appeals to you so i think that's fine um i think it's a good thing um and yeah no i mean i've had other people reach out i think i had a couple of people are like oh you know we were thinking about doing a jigsaw puzzle and then we saw yours i'm like <laughs> okay so, so I'm trying to stop them. <laughs> it's like yep sorry and so that was top part, yeah. like, great that you got out quick and you got out first and you was like there yeah um because i think yeah again I, j- I just think with the george floyd thing a lot of people just got fed up and were like okay cool like yeah we need to like start supporting ourselves we need to start doing more yeah i think for me after like Trayvon and I can't remember the others, but it was like a spate of similar deaths, like two years yeah. before George Floyd. And that's kind of what mm-hmm. got me going. And so, yeah. Okay. Um, wow. So, yeah. Wow. 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 Very, very interesting. I, I, I love this. I love this. It's, it's, it's always insightful having these um, um, sort of conversations, but yeah i mean keep keep going it sounds like uh the idea has been you know it's being validated more and more people want to do it um more and more inspiration um so i realized that your products is stocked at john lewis how how did that come about yeah again that was somewhat fortuitous it was a bit of a long process um mm. and so i think once i had the first product out um i emailed mm-hmm. them so i went onto their website it, it was a thing mm-hmm. where it was like in my mind is like I'm great. I've got a great product. This needs to be in John Lewis. This is like yeah. validation, as it were. This is like, you know, well-loved brand, you know, it's kind mm-hmm. of like the darling of the UK. It's posh, mm-hmm. but not too posh, if that <laughs> makes sense. It's, it just <laughs> yeah. kind of hits all the right notes and things. And so it was like, yes, yeah, so I just emailed them very naive, very raw, um, it's like a generic mailbox for like, you know, procurement or whatever. They had it on their website. Okay. Um, and a lady emailed me back or like, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> was like, okay. Wow. Was like, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Well, it's just, wow. no, it was kind of, it was kind of along, along those lines. I mean, at yeah. that time I only had like one product and I was stopped in like okay. a couple of like independent shops and things. I had like no traction, nothing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I kind of went back on like, you know, did I, you know, did I approach it right? Did I email the right place? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, everything's fine. Just, just not for us. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. And then I think I emailed her a couple more times. And again, it was just, no, no, no. But there was, there was a company called the Great British Exchange, and they do pop-ups mm-hmm. at John Lewis. I hadn't, really, okay. I hadn't really thought about it at first, because I, the way they looked, it was more like for artisanal, handmade goods and stuff, mm-hmm. um, like British companies. Um, but I think as long as you're a British company, whether it's made outside, doesn't matter. But you're So I, I emailed mm-hmm. them, and they are like, yeah, you know, we can, um, yeah, we'd love to, you know, have you as a pop-up in John Lewis. And at that mm-hmm. time, again, they had made an effort to get more black businesses 
like doing a pop up at John Lewis. So it's like you, you get like a whole okay. week at John Lewis, like Monday to Sunday. Um, and so they were, they were really actively and like the message was going around all like the WhatsApp groups and Instagram and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so they said yes. And then I was I was speaking to one guy um, that I'd met through another thing, and I was kind of talking to him yada yada yada, and you know, and he's like, oh, you've got the email address of the buyer at John Lewis. He just looked at me like I was nuts. Like, you need to be emailing them constantly. You need to like offer them to lunch. You need to like you need to sort of, like tell them like john lewis is key and you know you need to tell me what i need to do to get stopped in john lewis because i was very much like you know i don't know how to approach and he was just like he... and so I, from then I, I was a bit more um determined and mm-hmm. then because i was going to do the week long pop-up i was like look i'm going to be doing a week long pop-up let's see how it goes we should catch up afterwards see what the numbers are. so i kind of knew for me it's kind of it makes it easy for them if i can show and demonstrate that i've been in your shop and I've sold, so, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and so thankfully, yeah, we did well, we had some meetings, um, they asked to see samples, and then you kind of know, okay, now the ball's really going, and stuff like that, yeah. um, and it was funny, because when I finally got to meet them, so it was like a Zoom call, and I got on a call, and I was uh, a black lady, and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was so relieved, I was like, okay, yep, she gets it, she understands, and I was like, yeah. I was just like, visibly, just like, yeah, all like, the apprehension and everything was just drained out of my body basically and it was like cool yeah we had a good conversation and yeah so then she she i think it was like i don't know when it was i think it was just before christmas and she was like okay i think the great british exchange called me or she emailed like how much stock do you have and i was speaking to my friend he's like you should tell them how much do you need <laughs> so <laughs> you kind of negotiate i mean they beat me down a lot on a price, but um, okay. But yeah, but long story short, we we finally got stopped in John Lewis. It's been a challenge. Wow. Um, they've been good, but now the challenge is is for them to reorder. And so far, what they've asked for is like very l- small. They've less than ten percent of what they ordered initially. Um, okay. And also, also our prices have gone up, so trying to negotiate that with them. Um. Okay. And then I've tried to expand the range to have like an England, Scotland and Wales puzzle. And the idea would be, okay, okay, some of our puzzles like Ethiopia um, mm. and London and like, I don't know, one other didn't do so well. But actually, mm-hmm. if we can sh- we, we've shown that Africa, Jamaica, Ghana, Nigeria, so actually they've sold out. So you can mm-hmm. reorder those and then add these others to the to the order. And then just kind of okay. remove the ones that didn't do so well. Um, so okay. hopefully we still continue to grow the account with them um, over time. Um, that's okay. the idea. Um, but it's just a lot of stress and kind of like, oh, will they reorder? Won't they reorder? Are they happy? Are mm-hmm. they not happy? And, you know, if we don't get listed back with them, then other people not going to want it. Like Sainsbury's and Tesco's becomes a harder conversation, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's, that's always the kind of drama that's going on in my head and i just need to make really quieten it down and just be like have more belief and just like the long-term kind of trajectory and yeah focus on that and not just the short term like mm-hmm. three six months think more like the three six years maybe and yeah. kind of build it yeah. that way but people always want to see kind of the numbers now it's and the yeah. yeah and so it's that's that's the challenge um, it's trying to get them to buy into the brand and like the vision and like the whole quality time mm-hmm. and this is kind of where we're going because I think for a lot of the buyers it's more let's just get Peppa Pig let's get a Disney princess one let's get a Marvel mm-hmm. puzzle like you know you're giving us something that's great that's different but actually they see their buyers as going for stuff that they know that's Harry Potter mm-hmm. sort of thing like already like characters that are already out there so that's part of my challenge i guess um in doing what i'm doing so yeah 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 it's very very interesting and it's it's true in what you uh, mentioned it is tough competition right like i said disney harry Potter, all these established global brands with ridiculous budgets they probably don't even need to do marketing anymore they're just known you know throughout the world it's so tough but 
you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's just going to be a new brand around the block that you know people just want to change. Sometimes you know, butter kiss is known. I still eat butter, butter kiss, but there's that skinny popcorn, mm. for example. You know, yeah, maybe it's not as um, um, as big as the owners of um, butter kiss, but it's it's got its own niche following of, of people, and it it, it will just um, grow um, over time. Very very interesting about John Lewis. Um, I hope you. They do start ordering more. Um, it sounds like they will if if some of the pieces have been sold out. Mm. It just it just sounds like a, a no brainer. Do you have plans to stock it in any other retailers? Yeah, so we're now also in Waterstones, so that was really good for mm. us to do that. Okay, um, great. And then Target in America replied to our email, so we put oh, out some okay. forms for them. But again, it's still very much early days, and then it's like. Mm-hmm. the logistics of how the hell do you manage like you know i mean i can ship directly to, to america from china but it's just whatever kind of paperwork and everything else and i don't yeah. want to do the trouble of registering a company there and if they can do so it's just but these are nice headaches to have these are just headaches and mm-hmm. you, you do it once you learn and then you get over it but um part of it as well then sometimes having to work with distributors and like, mm-hmm. like middle people i guess middle men middle people um mm-hmm. and then obviously they they're not a charity so that you've got to pay them some money and then it's like okay mm-hmm. your margins start reducing and stuff and it's like actually wow. sometimes it feels like everybody else is making more money than i am because mm-hmm. they're taking their little percentages and then i'm left with like smaller and smaller amount it's like what the hell like mm-hmm. i don't know i'm sending wow. other people's children wow. to college sort of thing it's like <laughs> <laughs> what the hell um, it's crazy so yeah but what I found of a lot of the buyers, they just ignore you basically until they're okay. interested. So it's, it's, it's challenging. Okay. I think a lot of them, I don't know, maybe I'm being, I don't know, just feel like they don't get it or they're not interested. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a slog and, but yeah, it's a challenge, but yeah, it's anything worthwhile. Right. You know, doesn't come easy necessarily. Yeah. 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 That, um, yeah, that makes sense. It's it's gonna be a challenge, right? And but you, but you've got some big names already, so yeah, we just need uh, to hopefully, hopefully. We just need to build on it and sustain it and just uh, grow exactly. on it. Yeah, so that's the main thing. Exactly. Uh, I was curious. Why the name very puzzled? Where where did that come from? It was just again, it just whimsical. Just if something makes me chuckle, okay. or something makes me laugh, then yeah, I'm I'm all in. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really want to think about it and dwell on it for too long. Um. Like in the past, it might have been like Sankofa, you know, design or like, yeah. you know, Kush or, you know, Kemet or I don't know. <laughs> so I, I just feel like that was, those were just, I don't know, I want to say too black or too militant, but it was just like, I just yeah. wanted to have more of a universal, more of just an easy kind of appeal. Um, yeah. And it just, it just literally just came to me like within five minutes. And the main thing was like, mm-hmm. is the domain available? It's like, it's available. Yeah, I'm just going to get it. I just thought, I just feel like, I don't even know if I had like a spreadsheet at the time with like the list of tasks, mm-hmm. but I knew like, dude, you've got like a hundred things that you need to do. The name shouldn't like take up half the time, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like just yeah. think of a name, like the first couple that just works. I mean, I thought very puzzled. I thought slightly puzzled, maybe puzzled, very, I don't know. It's like very puzzled to find that works. <laughs> just, just, let's just go with it. And you can always change it later if you want to. Um, I mean, the, yeah. the actual registered company name at company's house, it's Osebo Limited. Mm-hmm. And Osebo in Ghana, um, I'm, my mum's an Ashanti. And there's okay. eight or nine different clans. And each clan has its okay. own totem. And the clan that my family is from, like you, you inherit, it's matrilineal heritage. And so the, the clan mm-hmm. that my family is from is called a Braytu. And our totem is the leopard. And Osebo is, okay. is the word for leopard. So... When you get like the, okay. when you get like the Nancy tales and things, you get like uh, the leopards, one of like the, the the characters, and so I just, I just picked okay. up. And again, it was just my daughter had come home from school like many years ago, and they'd given her like an Nancy book, and it had like a saber, and I'm like, yeah, just kind of, sh- I kind of remember them. Like, yep, yeah. again, it sounds more deep and impactful. And I just at that time, it just a sabo, yep, yeah, it's free, yep, yeah, just register it. Very puzzled, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just just register it. Let's move on and let's like do all the different tasks and things because there was literally like 100 things like yeah that was, 
Wow, that's insane. That's completely insane. And what's been the reception like? It sounds like it's been really, really good. That you've been getting very good feedback. Yes, it's really right. good. Um, and we're really grateful. Um, because I, I looked mm-hmm. at it as like people are spending time with their children or their loved mm-hmm. ones, or they're gifting it to other people's children. Um, and for me, mm-hmm. that's that's really impactful because kids are precious, right? And that time you spend with them mm-hmm. is important. So if you're using our products and you're engaging with your loved ones with our products, then yeah, we're just super thankful, super grateful. Um, I think it, the reception's great and to the point where it's, it's kind of taken on a, a bit of a life of its own where people are like, mm-hmm. where's the Grenada puzzle? Why do you not have like Sierra Leone? It's like, okay, like <laughs> a hundred or more, then yeah, I can get it going and stuff. So I'm trying to get to the point where now it's like, yep, yeah, it needs to be pre-orders because I've just kind of sunk my own money into it over time and I've just mm-hmm. reinvested what I've made. So now it's a case of, yeah, to do a puzzle, it shouldn't just be a whim on my part anymore. It should be like, actually, there's people asking for it and if we can get enough pre-orders, then, I mean, mm-hmm. we, by all means, we can design it, get a mock-up done and do the photos, but actually, we need people to commit to say, okay, yeah, you know, we've got a hundred to 300 or more pre-orders, then we can go and actually make, cause before we're making it, we're buying the minimum, which is like 500 units. That's in my house. And then I'm either selling it to the shops in bulk, like bit by bit, mm-hmm. or I'm selling it on my, and it's just like, I'm, I'm the money's gone out and then it's slowly coming back in and it's just, yeah. And then mm-hmm. I've got other puzzles that are running out that I need to replenish. And it's just like, no, actually now, it's got to the point of so many different SKUs and some SKUs I've just kind of discontinued for now because it hasn't mm-hmm. sold well, like um, Ethiopia, mm-hmm. Kenya, and South Africa. And so actually let's concentrate mm-hmm. on like the likes of Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica, mm-hmm. Africa, and the Caribbean one. Um, yeah. I mean, I want to expand, but actually at the point where we're getting more commitment, I guess, before, you know, spending yeah. too much money into, into it because then, the money's tied up you can't do other things and then yeah just sleepless nights <laughs> yeah yeah no I, <laughs> yeah i completely completely get what you're saying there and it's like you said you have to get c- commitment you know south africa ethiopia all of these are massive countries maybe it's just that the communities don't know about it yet and when they do know about it it would just be a, a, a wave right it's just about timing right rather than you know maybe the time is just not right for yeah. it yeah, maybe at some point it will be. Maybe, I don't know, in the future you start getting a thousand people emailing, yeah. Where, where's Ethiopia? Where's Ethiopia? And then you're like, oh, wow. Let's it, bring it, it back. a bit of that. It's a weird one because I thought, okay, here's a list of all the, the biggest countries in Africa by population. Mm-hmm. Let's just start with them because they've got the biggest demographic. Yeah. But it doesn't actually work that way. And, that, and that's a lesson I've learned, which is a good one. And I think of Ethiopia, it mm. might be difficult because obviously they're a bit of a civil war at the moment. South mm-hmm. Africa, okay. you know, historically and stuff, there might be again, you know, you know, whether people, so, so, so it's, it's strange. And then what I found is we then did the, the, the um, Jamaica puzzle and that far sells every other puzzle. Like it's only, okay. only ever behind the, the Africa puzzle. And it was just like, wow, never knew that. So then I was like, okay, cool. Let's do a Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. But so let's find all the, the, the countries in the Caribbean and start doing them now. Um, and I guess, you know, Jamaica may be like 3 million people population, but I guess they're mm-hmm. just very proud and quite rightly so. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just, I don't know. Yeah, there's, and especially in the UK, maybe, maybe not now, but I guess when I was growing up, you know, Jamaica was basically, you know, the heart and centre of the black community in a way, like, you know, mm-hmm. from, you know, the music to the, you know, the patois and everything else, the, the, the dress, you know, that was mm-hmm. the culture at, at that point. Um so yeah, it was really interesting. It was an eye opener. I always thought it would be successful, but I just thought it was numbers. Like, okay, there's there's mm. only three, I don't know, three million Jamaicans worldwide or something like that, compared to like, I don't know, two hundred million like Nigerians. I thought it'd be like a no brainer, mm-hmm. but actually, yeah, turned out completely wrong. So yeah. Wow. Was, and that's the kind of thing you don't know until you experiment, I feel, um, mm-hmm. until you actually, you know, try it out. So yeah, that was yeah, a good lesson learned. Yeah, 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 that makes, that makes, that makes absolute sense. And what does success look like for Very Puzzled? Yeah, good question. I think there's, there's a number of 
different bits. I think again, maybe going back to what one of my earlier points, it's just, um, yeah, my family being proud of me. Really, I think that's what ultimately mm-hmm. that's success. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I think they are, which is great. But yeah, that's that's to me success, fulfilling my potential. Uh, that's success. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately having something that I can pass on to my daughter and, you know, other descendants as well. Um, and it doesn't have to mm-hmm. be material things necessarily, although that is good, but money can always be squandered, misused. Um, I guess it's more being able to provide them with opportunities. So if, you know, my nephews and my nieces, it's like, yeah, you don't have to go work experience stacking shelves in Tesco, you, can, <laughs> you know, you can go, you know, work with Uncle Patrick and, you know, actually learn and actually be given real responsibilities. Um, and being able to extend that beyond my family, maybe, so the, the wider mm-hmm. community. So, you know, I had I had an idea of the football puzzles of, like, you know, having um, stands, that like pop-ups in different shopping centres and having different, like, mm-hmm. teams and giving them the option, like, you know, you can take a, a wage, like, I don't know, you can, I'll pay you, like, I don't know, hundred pounds for the day or you can buy the puzzles from me and you can take the profit that you make and so it's a case of mm-hmm. getting them to think do I play it safe and just take you know the guaranteed money or do I you know invest my own money and actually I can you know my my earnings potentially limit, limit limitless as it were and then seeing which one prevailed and obviously if you're more invested you're going to do more things to kind of generate sales as opposed to if I've got a hundred pounds, I don't care if I sell one or a hundred, like I'm not going yeah. to get paid anymore. And so just trying to give, you know, you know, 16 year old college kids or, you know, school kids that opportunity, because I feel a lot of the time we get, we just get a bad rep and actually all these, all mm-hmm. these young people need is just an opportunity, just something to do an outlet mm-hmm. and, you know, to, to kind of express their creativity in different ways. And so, yeah, those are the kind of things I, I want to be able to do. And I think to me, that's ultimately success um, mm-hmm. because then that's empowering other people, giving other people opportunities. Cause I just feel, yeah, you know, I've had to struggle. Um, and even me and my, mm-hmm. some might say big age, still struggling and trying to, you know, make things happen and trying to make it easier for the, for the next, you know, people coming up and giving them opportunities that they can then actually, you know, take it on further. Mm-hmm. yeah no i completely i completely get that it yeah no it makes it makes absolute um success and that's the thing success means different things to different people it doesn't always have to mean money it can mean other stuff it can mean freedom it, it can mean you know giving back to your community family you know anything like that so it's very just very important to understand what um success means to you um wow wow it's been it's been a, such a, a great conversation i definitely want to get you on for um, a part two in person i think sure. Um, it will be an even uh, more uh, vibrant um, conversation. So I just wanted to understand. So I asked you at the beginning, what was your, you know, worst financial mistake? What would you say is your greatest financial achievement? Um, Still going. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's all relative. Um, I mean, getting, you know, puzzles purchased by, you know, Airbnb was, was great. It was, you know, mm-hmm. a nice win. I feel that with these things, hopefully over time, it will be like, it pales into significant, not significant, but it just pales into comparison when you're doing like 10, 20, mm-hmm. you know, 100x what that was at the time. But mm-hmm. obviously at the time, it was a, a, a big milestone for us. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think for me, I'm, I'm not always focused on the numbers as much and mm-hmm. kind of the, the, and maybe that's good and bad, but I guess for me just starting was was the the, the biggest kind of um achievement um actually having the mm-hmm. idea and actually saying okay right i'm gonna commit to this i'm actually gonna do it getting it done mm-hmm. and and continuing um and striving to do more um that's that's been my key takeaway i think the only thing is is i'm not always very grateful i'm not you know i don't always kind of take the time to breathe look back and kind of appreciate you know the strides and kind of Mm-hmm. enjoy the journey it's it's i know it's a cliche mm-hmm. but um i'm always looking to the next thing i'm always like stressed i'm always like yeah kind of you know um but yeah i just need to just understand that 
things do take time have a bit more patience mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. you know yeah trust the process as they say and enjoy the journey but yeah. it's, it's kind of difficult when you're in it but um i need to find a way to yeah humble myself and yeah kind of take those things in a bit more yeah that no that makes sense i think as an entrepreneur it's that's how we're wired right what's the next thing okay achieve this what's next what's next mm. what's next what's next instead of being like oh i achieved this great let me enjoy it let me relax okay let's move on to the next thing let's enjoy it but we're just like oh, okay yeah that was cool but i can do bigger and better mm. it's just always like wired like that so no, very very interesting and i like that you said that you don't look at numbers um a lot of people do focus on the numbers sometimes and not that there's anything wrong with it everybody has a different approach but sometimes when you don't you might get the numbers um, at the end of the day as as well um what's next for for yourself yeah key for us um just continue what we're doing um definitely mm -hmm. try and get into america more uh find a way to really mm -hmm. kind of leverage what we have done um i mean mm -hmm. you look at it you know in the uk i don't know there's three two three four million maybe like people from an ethnic you know minority background and that's including mm -hmm. you know the whole bame umbrella with like you know mm -hmm. um you know south asians and things there's like mm -hmm. 44 million like african americans so that's there's, there's only like 60 wow. 70 million people so it's like you know mm -hmm. it's a huge market basically so it's trying to get into there but also try and you know get across europe as well so just doing more of what we're doing mm -hmm. and then just seeing whether you know puzzles not geared specifically to african caribbean people sell to mm -hmm. you know We've got an India puzzle that's done relatively okay. Yeah. Um, so, and part of me, my conscious was, I don't know, you, you kind of go to certain places and the hair shops are owned by, you know, South Asian people. They've got mm -hmm. no, like, qualms selling products to us, like Alpra. And so, mm -hmm. and, you know, you've got things like, is it like Turtle Bay or something that does, like, Caribbean food and it's not owned by Caribbean people <laughs> in any sense. So, I, yeah. I just, part, I don't know, part of me, I don't know if it was, like, idealistic or philosophical. I don't know, it was kind of like, yeah, but people sell ARG stuff to us all, every day, all day, all the time, right? Yeah. We don't necessarily complain. Um, you know, yeah. why are we, do you want to come in? Why, why are we so scared and nervous to like, you know, yeah. do stuff for other people that's not us? So, yeah, I just think, yeah, why not? Okay, yeah, no, I love that. I love that. It's a, it's very, very true. Oh, hello. So that's, that's the co-founder just getting ready for bed. Okay. <laughs> well done. Hi. Cool. Anything you want to add? Uh, no. No, okay, don't. So nothing to add. Okay. Um, so where can people find you? Um, so obviously, as you mentioned, we're in John Lewis. We're in Waterstones as mm -hmm. well now. But we're also mm -hmm. stopped by a number of really great independent black-owned shops. Um, so you've got Diverse mm -hmm. Gifts in Brixton. You've got the Black Books okay. Archives also in Brixton. Pempancy also in Brixton. Mm -hmm. But then you've got Book and Culture. They now have a pop-up mm -hmm. in Wembley, um, but also okay. online. And then you've got This Is Book Love, also online. And then Our Kids mm -hmm. Trove, also online. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch. If you follow us on Instagram, we can like give mm -hmm. you a list as well. So, um, And that's just the UK stock here. So we're also stocked in Ghana, mm -hmm. the US, um, mm -hmm. Germany, Netherlands, Austria. Yeah, like 10 okay. different countries at the moment now. So again, trying to really expand um, mm -hmm. and yeah, be, be as... Um, worldwide as, as possible yeah and what's your instagram handle uh very very puzzled okay very very puzzled on on instagram are you on any other tiktok uh Just, uh we're, yeah pretty much all social media very very puzzled okay. so where okay. we don't post much on on tiktok yet but pinterest mm -hmm. facebook twitter and instagram are, are our main ones okay great thank you and make sure to to give uh, very puzzled a followed on those uh, social media handles, also buy their products. I'm gonna make sure that I get my version. I'm gonna get Nigeria because I'm Nigeria and I'm Syrianian. You don't have that one yet, so it's, when you get that in the future, yet, I'll, so I'll go and get really, that one. Uh, a big request though for Sierra Leone, definitely. <laughs> yeah, they'll definitely, definitely. I can see them buying it. Um, have you got any final words for the listeners? Um. No, I think the main thing is 
there's there's lots of advice. It's hard to take it in and execute on them. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the main thing is you've got to believe in yourself, um, and you've also got to be yourself. Um, that's one of the ones that always stuck with me. Um, uh, I've got like an uncle, like did an MBA. Um, I kind of aspired to him, and I think the only advice he ever gave me was just uh, be yourself. And I was like, that's all you're mm-hmm. gonna talk with all your knowledge and experience. It's like but when you actually like <laughs> drill down into it, it's like. If you're not yourself and people don't like you, then you've, you've wasted the effort. Like, you know, and if you are yourself and they don't like you, at least you know, and you can just continue to be yourself. Mm. And so it's just like, mm-hmm. you're just going to waste too much time not being yourself. And I, even yeah. at work, there was, we did like a test and stuff like that. And they were like, when you're, when, you're, when you're not yourself, you just spend so much energy. Like, and we all might, we all do it in a way. You go into the corporate world, you might put on like a mask, you might like, you know, it's code switch as they say, but, in all of that, you're spending energy. You're not being yourself. You're mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, so as much as you can, really just be yourself. And if they don't like it, forget about it. Like, go somewhere where you can be yeah. yourself. And, yeah, if they do, then great. Then, you know, you, you're winning, right? And then, yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. I think being original is, is super important and being authentic is super important. It's not about trying to be nobody but you you know you're always going to have your core audience and your own fans so it's better just to be yourself rather than just doing things just for you know whatever sort of vanity metrics that that that, you know you cater to so yeah and i completely agree thank you so much patrick for um taking the time um to to come onto the podcast and share your story it's been very insightful um i'm sure the listeners learned a lot i i definitely learned a lot like i said i want to definitely do a part two in person um to yeah just showcase what you, what you have to, to offer to the world because i think it's a great product i think it sends um a great message um and yeah no it's been it's been it's been so good i i hope listeners that you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast um and yeah we'll we'll see you next week thanks for for listening thank you so much for your time yeah.